I'm Steve Sparks, the CEO of Wichita Falls Faith Mission. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the day that we live for around here. Amen. Graduation Amen. day. I'm so proud of these guys, James and Richard and Jerry and Trent, for the progress that they've made and for the friendship that we've developed during that time. And, and then I've got the privilege of seeing the growth in their lives, too. I've seen Jerry and Trent both get vehicles while they're here, um, jobs. Uh, James and Richard growing up in the New Beginnings program and then moving on to whatever's next in their lives. It's just amazing to be able to see God work and be a, priv and a privilege to be a part of that. So let's pray and start these festivities off right. Father, I thank you so much for these men. I thank you for sharing them with us and allowing us to be a part of their journey. I'm thankful that you have not given up on any of us, but that you are always there whenever we're ready to turn and to come to ourselves. You're like the prodigal father's, prodigal son's father who is ready to meet us more than halfway. And I'm just thankful, Lord, for a program like New Beginnings, for Bob and his leadership. And I pray, Father, that you will direct these four men as they go on from here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Boy, it is my favorite day. And you know what? I, I'm so excited. It's nice to see actual human faces again. Uh, I know we've been on TV, but it's just not the same. It's just not the same. I like to see actual human faces again. So once again, uh, as we gather for graduation, I'd like to talk to you about these four gentlemen seated on the front row uh, and tell you how they beat the odds. How they beat the odds. The success rate for this program is 10%. 10%. That means that 90% of everyone who enters this program leaves before they complete this program. So when you see these four guys on this, on this seat up front, you realize they, they've done a powerful thing. They've done a powerful, powerful thing. Now, 10% sounds low until you realize that the success rate of your average secular program is 1%. 1%. Without Jesus, 1%. And Teen Challenge, Jesus included, a fantastic ministry, has a national average of just 4%. So we are blessed beyond measure here. Uh, that 10% sounds low until you compare it to everything else. You realize 10% is high. Every single individual that walks into my office requesting entry into the New Beginnings program has the ability to graduate. Every one of them. But the 10% that do graduate do so because they are totally committed to the process of change. And they are single-minded in the pursuit of that change. Let's talk for just a minute about being single-minded. Single-minded uh, in your pursuit of God, single-minded in your faith walk, and single-minded in accomplishing your mission and purpose for Christ. The Bible says this in James 1, 1 through 9. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work. This is for you, Jerry. Let patience have its perfect... Let, let me say it again. Let patience have its perfect work. Patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. The primary principle that we must put into action in order to live our lives as Christians is single-mindedness. That's it, single-mindedness. In order to be called a true follower of Christ, you can't ride the fence, you can't keep your options open, or develop a plan B in case God fails. God never fails. God never fails. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11:6 6, that without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God, listen, for he that cometh to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We say this all the time in this place. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. If you get God out of order, if you put anything else ahead of God, it will not work. It seek first. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right standing, right standing with God and everything else, everything that you want. And what I tell the guys in this program all the time, what is it you want? A house, a job, a car, a wife, my kids, my family restored. I want to be free. I don't want the police on my front door. All those things can be restored to you. 
Every bit of that. See, faith in God is nothing more, nothing less than single-mindedness. Mental and emotional stubbornness. <laughs> Mental and emotional stubbornness. Absolutely. Or a refusal to give up on God when things get tough. Because listen, things are going to get tough. I tell the guys in this program, this program is difficult, but it's far more difficult when you walk out the door because sin is crouching at the door waiting to destroy you. It's waiting. It's much more difficult out there because uh, when you get over the massive obstacle that is drug and alcohol addiction, you still have to learn to live life. And we all know that living life is tough, right? Even without an addiction, life is tough. I find it interesting that people will accept large amounts of adversity, poverty, separation from loved ones, and personal hardship of nearly every kind, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds in pursuit of money, fame, power, education, or influence. However, when it comes to their walk with Christ, a light mist to keep them out of church, an offense of any kind will drive them away from fellowship, and when things get really tough, their faith wilts like flowers in the Texas sun. When you were born again and began your Christian walk, God began the process of molding you like clay or shaping you like iron in order to form you into a tool suitable for His purpose. This process is called sanctification, and it is an absolute necessity for your Christian growth. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. To die on the altar every day. The, the message of the cross is come and die. Come and die to what? Come and die to our desires. Come and die to our plan. Come and die to our wants and needs and give all that up for Christ who gave it all up for us. Do not conform be shaped, fashioned, and molded to the pattern, the ideals, the thinking of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and acceptable will for your life. You are a three-part being, and when you were born again, your spirit was changed, became a brand new creation, but your body remained the same, and your mind, will, and emotions still hated God. The Bible says that your mind is an enmity, hatred, or war with God. This inner battle between your spirit and your soul, your mind, will, and emotions can make God's process of molding, shaping, and forming us into His image very painful. It is not easy to be a Christian. Not if you're doing it right. It's not easy. And though many of us will endure that pain for money, fame, power, education, or influence, most of us draw back when God allows that pain to be used for His purposes. Forgetting that God can take those things which the enemy means for our harm and turn them to our good. Amen. However, if we're going to please God, and only faith-filled Christians can please God, we must be single-minded in our pursuit of His plan for our life. And the process of sanctification requires nothing less, nothing less than the dogged pursuit of God's plan for our life. Not our plan, God's plan. The New Beginnings program is the beginning of that lifetime process. In reference to the process of sanctification, the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3, 12 through 15, not that I've already attained or I'm already perfected. I've been a Christian for a very long time and I have not attained nor have I been perfected. And if you don't believe that, ask my wife. She'll be free to tell you. <laughs> that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. Be, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, one thing I do, one thing I do, I press on, Okay? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, that's the hard one, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Now, I love the message translation of this verse. It's a lot clearer to me. And sometimes I'm not too bright. It says, I'm not saying that I have it all together. Or that I haven't made, because I certainly don't and you never will. But I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously reached out to me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running, and I'm not turning back. So let's keep focused on the goal. Those of us who want anything, everything that God has for us, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. Yeah. 
I'm here to introduce today our four graduates. Our first graduate is Jerry Dodd DeBoard from Faith Enterprise. Jerry Dodd! Jerry died. <laughs> wow. Jerry has been sort of a special case since he washed up on the sun-drenched shores of our little paradise. <laughs> Having Jerry in the program has been something akin to going on a long trip with an ADHD child who continuously asks you, are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> or who says I'm bored every single mile of the trip. That's Jerry Don. Jerry Don. He started day one. Bob, is there anything I can do? Is there anything? Can I help you? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do it? Can we go with it? Can I... Stop, Jerry. Stop. You see, Jerry only has one hobby, just one, work. He has an interest, more work. And when he's tired of working, well, he never gets tired of working. So it was everything we could do to keep him in Bible study for the limited periods of time when he wasn't working on running electrical wiring, doing a plumbing job, repairing a floor, mowing a lawn, cutting down trees, or driving some form of equipment. Jerry would squirm, stand up, stand on his head, and practically spin around in class until he felt the sweet freedom of escaping once again to the great outdoors. In, yeah, yeah. In the end, we did manage to get some Bible into Jerry, but it was like feeding pureed green beans to my granddaughter. It was an exercise of futility and frustration. Jerry did manage, somehow, Jerry to pick up some Jesus while he was here, and he is now moving on to the transition house where he will drive his new supervisor, PG, over at AOC crazy every day. I have every confidence that he will do that. Seriously, though, Jerry's knocked it out of the park throughout his stay here. God did manage to knock off a lot of the rough edges, and now, for the rest of your life, he's going to be grinding down the rest. It's the rest of your life, brother. It ain't over yet. You're just getting started. Jerry, I've got one scripture for you today. It is Philippians 1, 6, which says this. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And he will complete it whether you want him to or not. You can bow the knee now, or you can bow later, brother. Amen. Right? Love the Lord. It ain't, it ain't done yet. It ain't done yet. Our second Faith Enterprise graduate is Trent Warren. Everybody, <laughs> Trent! Trent took a different path through Faith Enterprises as he went to work for the resale store. I had my doubts about Trent when he first arrived. I had a lot of doubts about Trent when he first arrived. But his sister brought him in in handcuffs, threw him in my office, and said, I'm leaving him here. Yeah. Almost, right? Pretty, Pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> but it wasn't long before he found his place in the program and began turning out great work for Tim over at Faith Resale. While he was here in this building, he was working hard, doing his chores, and contributing to his Bible study classes. Then he would go to the store and work hard, sometimes late into the evening, providing great customer service and displaying a great team-first attitude. And with all of that going on, with all of that going on, I want you, this man is coming out on things, going through an addiction, trying to whip an addiction, working at the store, doing his chores here, participating in Bible study, and with all that going on, he was also taking GED classes at night. So that he could further his education and get a better job when he leaves. I am so proud of what Trent has accomplished while he's been here because it was difficult. I can tell you when I'm not in class and some other teacher is teaching or I have a video in this room, I have a camera there and a camera there and I have a monitor that sits on my desk and I watch the class at my desk while I'm doing paperwork. And I would watch Trent after he'd done his GED classes at night, come in for class in the morning, and this is what he'd do. <laughs> <laughs> By golly, he'd stay awake. And he got his classes in, and he did his homework, and uh, there was a great deal of it that was very interesting and cogent. You did a great job, Trent. I am proud of you. I also want to give a shout-out to Trent's sister. I think her support of Trent during his stay here enabled him in many ways to complete what he started when he walked through our doors. Trent's sister was his greatest advocate, both bringing him here and encouraging him to stay. And, uh, and Trent, I think you need to take her out for a steak when you leave. Yeah. I have one scripture for you today, Trent. It's James 1, 2 through 4, which says this. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Your faith is going to be tested when you walk out these doors. The hardest part of this program is when you walk out of here. You've got to make good choices. For the first time, for many of you, it's the first time in your life you've learned to make good choices. You've got to make those choices. He says, but let patience 
have, what, does this sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> Let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. It has been a pleasure working with Trent, and I will continue to pray that his hair will be completely restored. <laughs> <laughs> there is a verse in 1 Kings that says, Get out, old baldy! I told him, I said, I'm not going to use that. <laughs> Get out, old baldy! Time to go! <laughs> Our next graduate is James Martin. James has Woo! grown. Yeah, James! <laughs> James has grown tremendously during his tenure in New Beginnings. He and I have had many deep conversations about scripture and theology, the meaning of life along the way, and although we don't always agree on everything, we have found common ground in one tenet of the faith. We both sincerely believe that uh, my boss and our new site director needs to replace that 49ers cup with something nice and say silver and blue maybe with a star. What do you think, James? Yeah. 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 49ers, man. Oh, my goodness. You can't even be born again. Yeah. 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 All seriousness, James has James been a rock star in the kitchen during his time with us. The kitchen is a vital part of what we do here, and managing the kitchen as a program student requires nerves of steel, the ability to work days on end without sleep and to make three meals a day with minimal materials and a staff that changes more frequently than Richard Garner's facial hair. <laughs> I think he's a spy. He changes his facial hair more than anybody I know. I think it's stick on, dude. I think it's stick on. Okay? And James has done all that and more, and he has done it well. James, I'm extremely proud of what you've accomplished during your time in New Beginnings. And I'm looking forward to hearing more good things about you as you move over to Faith Enterprises 2 and your new job at the resale store. I have one scripture for you today, James. It is Romans 5, 3, and 4. It says this, And not only this, but with joy, let us exult in our sufferings and rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardship, distress, pressure, trouble, produces patient endurance. The theme moves all the way down to moment. Patience. And endurance, proven character, spiritual maturity, and proven character, hope, and confident assurance of eternal salvation. Patience. Keep working it. Don't stop working it. The system works. The process works. You just have to keep working the process. No matter what you run into, just keep working the process. Don't stop working the process. Keep moving forward. When I went to the United States Army NCO Academy many years ago, there was a sign over the door that said this, that which does not kill us makes us stronger. The obstacles that you will face when you leave here, the giants that inhabit your promised land, cannot destroy you. They can only make you stronger if you always remember that your strength is in Christ and he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Finally, we come to Richard Garner. Richard is done. Richard! Drink water before I get to Richard. <laughs> Richard has done an amazing job throughout his time in New Beginnings. In fact, he's done so well that I had to wrestle Joe Bob two falls out of three on any given day to determine whether Richard was staying in class with me or heading out to mow the world with Joe Bob. And when I say mow the world, Joe Bob's about to mow the whole world. If he had, if there's a part of it he hadn't mowed, he'll find it and go mow it. I promise you that. I think we hit about 50-50, Richard. I'm not sure. Maybe 40-60. I'm not sure. So to say that he is graduating today and moving over to Faith Enterprises is a bit of a misnomer. In his heart, I think he's already moved that direction, and his bedding has been down there for quite some time. Amen? Amen? Richard has overcome everything that has been thrown at him while he was here, and I can tell you that COVID-19 hasn't made anything easier in that regard. Everyone in this building has been concerned for their families, and Richard has been no exception. And he's had every opportunity, I'm telling you, every opportunity to bail out and many temptations to do so, to call it quits and to move on. But Richard remains totally committed to finishing what he started here. Richard, I'm extremely proud of your decision to stick it out. I, I didn't know if you would or not. I was amazed. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I was amazed. I've seen people get the kind of money you got. I was stunned that you stayed. But you did. I want you to know that we've all enjoyed the many seasons of your facial hair. <laughs> We're going to miss that ever-changing scenery. That's no <laughs> I have one scripture for you today, Richard. It's Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, and it says this, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay... And those are the ones in heaven and the ones down here too, Richard. There's a lot of people watching us. 
Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. My final charge to all of you is found in 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 26, which says this, You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You are the beginning of a legacy for your families. You are the beginning of those in your families that will understand and know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Your children and your grandchildren. You're the beginning of a long legacy of goodness. A tradition that they, people, your, your families will remember this day. Your children will remember this day. They'll look back and they'll say, do you remember when everything changed? Do you remember when everything changed? Share in suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. We've got to finish the race. Finish it well. Run the race until the day we meet Jesus. Amen? Amen. And congratulations, man. Thank you. I'd like to uh, thank everybody for coming today that uh, took time out of their day to come up here and see the graduation, hang out, and uh, get to know everybody a little bit better. Uh, I'd like to thank the staff members from the top down, Steve, Diane, Bob, Jeff, Bill, Kyle, Miss Sherry, Rod, you're not staff, but you might as well be, Gary, I mean, anyone I didn't name, you, you got Brad, you guys have been tremendous to me. I mean, outstanding people. Uh, <clears throat> so, I got a little bit of my testimony here. I want to read it because it kind of sums it up toward the end. But uh, it was uh, August 7, 2000. I was busted for manufacturing my military career. As I knew it was probably out of control. Life as, I, life as I knew it was over. November 2000. I was in Copper Scope, Texas. I climbed up a tree. A little bit of my hard headedness here. Thank God it didn't work. But I uh, took a water hose with me, wrapped it around my neck, tied it around the tree, and dumped it out. Water hose broke. I said, Well, I'm going to fix that. So I go around the garage and I grab a stitching cord. One of the good ones, you know. About a half inch in diameter, brand new. Climb up the same tree, wrap it around my neck about 30 times. Wrap it around a tree limb, jump out of the tree, tree limb broke. Got up. Got my truck and I left. Still running on empty, chasing up, you know, chasing life as, as I knew it. February, fast forward a few years, February 2005. Still doing everything wrong. Been in prison a couple times by then. Uh, take a syringe, I'll pull up 50 units of brake fluid, dot three brake fluid, and go out to a ditch. Nobody can see me. I sit in the ditch. I go to ingest the brake fluid in my arm. I got, I don't know, I don't know how much of it went in there. All I know is I woke up an hour later with a driving headache and I mean it felt like someone trying to beat my head off so I just discarded what I had, went back in the house, ended up going to sleep and slept it off for a while. For another month anyway, we was in Burbank, Texas. I was living with my friend on Shady Lane, still let nothing change and uh, I was just tired of it again, you know. Uh, I took about 1,500 pills, rat poison, you name it. I don't even know what was in the cabinet, but I took 1,500 pills, blacked out. My nephew brought me two. He didn't bring me two, but he called 911. They rushed me to United, I guess. I stayed up there for about three days. And, uh, I mean, uh, from March 2005 to April, May, May, nothing changed really other than uh, my... I went to No Kona, you know, back and forth. But God stepped in because I wouldn't do anything for myself other than trying to kill myself, obviously. So uh, he had a bigger plan. So uh, at that time, I guess all I could think of was sending me to prison. <coughs> but it worked. I was in and out of prison again until 2012. And uh, 
saying that, I, I, you know, I, everybody that knows me knows I like to listen to music, you know, and uh, I, I sing pretty good, you know. Uh, if you don't believe me, just ask me, you know. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, Casting Crowns uh, sings a song of the whale, and there's a verse in there that says, I have what you need, but you keep on searching. I've done all the work, but you keep on working. When you're running on empty and you can't find a remedy, just come to the whale. Well, I was hard-headed. I never worry about coming to the well, you know. But, thank God for the Bible and everything that's in it. And uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Fast forward 2019, June 2019. I was in the same mindset as I was 2000, 2005. I met Bob and Gloria. And uh, thank God I did. I don't know what, it, what would have happened, and it doesn't matter, because God stepped in again, and here I am. Uh, August 7th, 2000, remember I told you is when it kind of started. August 7th, 2019, I gave my life to the Lord, right here yeah. in front of Bob, Bob Johnson. Uh, I've never imagined life could be as good as it is right now, and I'm only scratching the surface. I don't have it all figured out. And I know I don't. I don't have to. Because uh, Philippians 4, 12 through 13 says, I know, I know how to love on almost nothing or with anything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And uh, I mean, I, I just thank God for this program. I mean, I wouldn't be here today. I, I just know it wouldn't. There's not a doubt in my mind. Uh, so I thank you, Bob. I thank you for being hard headed. I thank Joe Bob for being hard headed. Miss Diane, for I'm not going to say you're hard headed, but you are. <laughs> but, 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 but thank God, you know, thank God you are. And uh, I, I have more, I have more friends and family in this room right now than I've ever had in my life. I'm, it's all because of this, or because of God, you know, because of this program. Uh, for my brother behind me, if he won, man, you guys, uh, I, I miss you guys. I know I'm just across the, across the alley, but uh, I love you dudes like brothers. Yeah, I think y'all know that. Uh, y'all are eight of the hardest working men I've ever worked with in my life. I'd hire any one of y'all at any rate, I promise you, and I always will. If I'm ever in that position, you always have a job. All you got to do is find me. Or, if you need to complain about Joe Bob, <laughs> you're, you're going to, I promise you. You're going to need it sometime in the next 11 months, 13 months, I promise you. By all means, come to me, because I've argued with him, and I've hollered at him just as much, you know, but you can't holler at him, he'll, he'll, let, he'll hear you, I don't know if he'll listen, but he'll, he'll hear you. For the pro programmer behind me, stay the course, man, I mean, it, it's worth it. There's a lot of things. I know a lot of you brown shirts, a lot of you guys I don't even know. A lot of you people I don't even, you know, I haven't even, don't even know your name, but that doesn't matter. I mean, you, you, I promise this program is working. And I'm only one one success story so far. There's plenty of people over the transition house that are doing it, they're making it. There's guys going through this program that are doing it, they're making it. I like to leave you off this. Psalm 24 it says, May He grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. Thank y'all. God bless you. Giving me my sanity back, really, man. Love you, brother. And uh, the staff and all y'all, man. Thank y'all for accepting me in the program because it, it has changed my life a lot. I don't think your sister was going to let us not accept you. <laughs> yeah, no, probably not. <coughs> but, um. Uh, I'm shackled under the bed. <laughs> yeah. staying here. The only thing, uh, there's a, one verse that I have that stuck with me the whole time, and it's in Jeremiah 17, 7. And it says, Blessed is the man that trusts the Lord. Mm, yes. And I have trusted the Lord through this whole process, and He has blessed me beyond I could imagine. I didn't think I would be where I am now, man. And and to the, my brothers, man, just trust the process, dude. Like it works if you work it, man. Amen. And that's Very really all I got. The Lord. Okay. Gosh, I would love to say this is. My first time behind this, and it's not. Um, you know, eight months ago, guys, just a brief little history. I was down in downtown uh, Fort Worth, homeless, 
very, you know, uh, started at 49, being homeless for my very first time in my life at 49, and it just kept sliding downhill from there. But uh, eight months ago, I was um, uh, middle of winter, downtown Fort Worth, and the only shelter I had was a porta potty. And uh, I was, uh, I had to panhandle for the very first time and approach strangers. And uh, I had a prayer every morning and uh, it was that uh, Lord put the right people in my path to, uh, to get me what I need to survive for the day. And I wish I could just say that I spent that money on, on food. It wasn't my addiction of choice, my alcohol has always been my downfall. And so, uh, but I found myself in this porta potty and uh, this bad storm come through, a bad thunderstorm came through and, and uh, I like to, uh, you know, I, I yelled at God that day, that night. I was mad at him. You know, I was, he had put so many different people in my life, but I wasn't seeing all that. All I was seeing was anger. So, um, you know, and I prayed, you know, Lord, just get me out of this. And so I ended up back down in Corpus, and then I met some people down there, and they got me back to Fort Worth. And then the, the, the person who got me there to Fort Worth said, okay, I, what do you want to do now? And, uh, I said, I guess I'll, I'll try to go back to Wichita Falls and go to the Faith Mission. And so I called first, and uh, it was, I believe it was you who answered the phone, and uh, he asked me my name, and I said, James Martin. And he said, didn't you just leave here? And I said, no, there was another James Martin here. And, uh, said, uh, but anyway, uh, so I came down, and I didn't come down with the best reputation because my last time in this program, four or five years ago, give or take, uh, Bob talks about the dash. And what that dash is is on your on your tombstone, and uh, you know what people are going to remember you. They're going to remember what's in that dash. And I didn't have a very good dash my last time here. I left very arrogant, prideful, egotistical. And so you got this uh, you got this uh, iceberg, and you can blow the top of that iceberg. Your your addiction. You can blow that top off, and uh, you got all this stuff that's going to rise up to the top and that's my pride my arrogance my egotistical ways and uh those are those are what i'm dealing with now and uh so i'm in bob's office and he and he uh and he's he's blunt he's honest he said you know there's some people here that think i should bring you back and uh I said okay and it was because of what i've mentioned before so he said i'm going to teach you some some humility and uh he said i'm going to put you in the kitchen for a good long while his exact words and that was seven full months and I thought I was almost out a couple times and they pulled me back in and uh, but uh, you know it taught, it taught me a lot about myself it taught me what what I can endure and what you know what I when I thought I couldn't endure it anymore I would get more of it and it made me it made me a stronger man Bob thank you uh, and yes you're right we've had a lot of deep talks and uh, it's uh, it's been amazing um, my third day back, I had passed Mr. Sparks here three, four times throughout that bubble, and I know he saw me, <laughs> but he, he never reckoned that he didn't say a word. I was like, okay, he's one of those people Bob was saying he didn't want me back. <laughs> but uh, uh, so I just, you know, there is a lot of hard stuff there to deal with. Crow and pride had to swallow it. But anyway, I'm sitting where this lady's sitting right now, uh, Trent's sister, and. Uh, he comes in on, on, on his Wednesday morning Bible study and he gets so far into it and he just happens to look over and he just completely stops his, his sermon and uh, and I said yes it is me and uh, and I and I saw, stood up and I went to shake his hand he goes no and he gave me a hug and Steve that meant the world to me man I mean it really did I, I had no idea what I was going to be walking back into here I mean uh, it, it was awesome so. Thank you. I mean, you said earlier about the prodigal son, and you made me feel very welcome. So thank you very much for that. And uh, you know, the only way I was able to make it through that kitchen and, and, and endure everything that was—I mean, I was just freaking out at some point. Was Dennis up? You really, really, man, you helped me out a lot in there, brother. Your your uh, your ear—I must have talked it off a million times, bro, and I must have just really cried, you know. Uh, 
but I, I thank you so much for being a rock for me in that place. And, and all you men in that kitchen are lucky to have this guy get you through your program. So listen to him, and he's, he's just an awesome dude. You know, really, he is. Yeah. Um, but Bob Johnston, I, I really love you, brother. Oh, yeah. And this is a, uh, that's hard for me to say, man. I mean, uh, I've had to always rely on me, and I've never really did very well at that. I've uh, been a loner most of my life. And uh, I've been through 13 programs, and you have told me this will be your last program. That's one, man. Uh, I told you earlier in the band, one thing I didn't do before was be honest with myself. Even completing programs, I never was really 100% honest with myself. And I told you that I had told people before, I don't have another one in me, but I told you today, I do have another one in me. But the desire is not there. So that fear is is what's making me not want to do this anymore. I'm tired of standing behind these things, man. I'm tired of having to, uh, I, I'm just tired, you know. On the 18th of this month, I'll be 52 years old. Enough's enough, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I agree. And because of you, sir, because of God putting you in my path, and being a jack wagon, <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, it's, it's really helped me, you know. Special gift, I have. <laughs> you know, you, 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 live, you live with people and you learn, their, you learn their stuff, you know. People got quotes, you know. Uh, uh, where's that old Greg at? Greg is a poor guy. You know, Joe Bob is. You know. Dennis is... Uh, uh, Fantastic, and mine is outstanding. But Bob Justin has got some, got some. But the best one that he has when he's frustrated with us is, he just goes like, I can't believe he did that stupid thing. <laughs> and, um, my stupid thing was, uh, I had a steak. And I, I had, I had my entitlement, my arrogance, my egotistical overflowed, and I had a steak. And. Uh, or Jeff, we're in his office, and he's, you know, first week on the job, he's had four programmers in his office, and we're all on camera enjoying this steak, you know. But uh, so, yeah, it's it's. But those are like pebbles in a pond, you know. Some some pebbles they uh, that wake goes out, that wave goes out, and some of them are real smooth afterwards. Mine ended up being a boulder creating a tidal wave, you know. But. I remember you, Jerry, when you came in and you told me I handled it the right way, you know, and I meant a lot coming from you. Jerry here uh, was one of the guys that helped me build my confidence in myself by approaching men because the Bible teaches us that if we have a problem or if we think there's a problem with our brother or sister, then we approach them, you know, and, uh, and, you, see, and you see what's wrong. And uh, Jerry being Jerry, he's like, man, I'm just... 99% crazy, or, or I act that way. BS. 99% BS. But uh, he's helped me through my program a lot just by your actions. See, the words are one thing, but the, the actions behind the words, you back up what you do. You walk the walk, sir. Amen. And so I, I appreciate the, the, uh, the things that you have done for the men for, in this program. Uh, Richard Garner, you're also an inspiration to me. You, uh, you know, we, we roomed together back there. We've had some talks before, and um, you know, it was cool being able to kind of talk like that with you. And uh, once you abandoned me and moved over there, it was talk. It was talk stop. But yeah, now I'm back over there, bro. Now, now I'm right there with you. So now you're you're also a man that, that I look up to here. So and Trent Warren, like he said, man, doing everything and also going to uh, GED classes, man. Hey, bro, I just want to shake your hand on that. You're an amazing dude. Man. But hey, guys, I'm, I'm sorry for taking up a lot of time. I just want to thank everybody for being out here for support. Kyle, you're pretty awesome too. Congratulations on your move, by the way. It's the same thing with Mr. Bill. I love you too, bro. You're awesome. And Joe Bob, you just keep being Joe Bob. <laughs> All right. That dude was actually one of the guys that I was in this thing with. And to see you come as far as you have, sir, is. No, that's awesome. Uh, congratulations to you, sir. Thank you. Man, I can talk all day, get up here and get nervous.
Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank everybody. Uh, Joe Bob, for allowing me to work for your crew, to be one of your leads. It's awesome. I've um, enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, Jerry, you know, you took me under your wing when I first got here. You know, you're part of the reason why, where I'm at. We've had a lot of talks. You've helped me through countless things, especially you know, my relationship with a lot of people and just staying in the program, keeping my head right. And, you know, taught me a lot of things too, so I definitely appreciate it. Welcome. Uh, to everybody else, Steve, thank you. Thanks for being here. You know, it's all, a lot of it's behind the scenes, but it's still a lot. That goes there, all the staff. There's a lot of stuff that's behind the scenes that nobody sees, but y'all do a lot of work that is definitely appreciated. So, just want to say thank you. Bob, I would thank you, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. You know, we've had very few conversations, but every time we have a conversation, it's uh, it's definitely been a lesson learned. Uh, like I told you when I first came in, that you know, I'm pretty good at working these programs. I've been through a lot of programs in the military, and I learned how to work them, got good at it, but it didn't teach me anything. Uh, lesson for all y'all, don't try to work for all this program. <laughs> it backfires on you real quickly. He doesn't like it. Um, found that out, but I definitely appreciate everything you've done for me. Um, it's it's definitely helped me a lot. A uh, little bit of background. I I wrote a speech, but when I read it, you know, it's it's uh, more or less depressing. So it's kind of you know a lot of it. Uh, this Bible teaches us that. Uh, we need to, you know, let go of our past. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, but uh, it's hard to look up. There. But uh, yeah, um, I was, I was an alcoholic. I was, you know, I was gone. I was. I grew up. Uh, can't really pinpoint a lot of things to put it on. I can't blame it on a lot of things. Uh, it just, my life ended up there. Um, you know, went from being a rock star in the military to, you couldn't, I can't even remember days that I wasn't drunk, uh, to uh, suicidal, to, I didn't have a care in the world. But, uh, yeah, that's, and come back here, got out of the military, came back to Wichita, and I was going to meetings, and, uh, you know, those meetings every day, you know, telling myself and telling everybody else that, you know, I'm an alcoholic, and, well, I'm not, you know, so, <coughs> not anymore, I'm, I'm saved, I'm different. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 I used to go around here and I'd ask everybody, even have a conversation with Bob, a couple of people who had a uh, conversation with preachers in Canada. <laughs> but uh, about how do you know if you're saved? And honestly, that's going to depend on you. Um, you know, you'll know it when you know it. It's however far you want to keep that gap between you and God. You can keep it there, but if you want to fight it keep fighting it, but once you open your heart, once, you know, you place everything else aside and you actually accept them and you ask for it, he'll find you. That's right. Amen. So, but, uh, like I said, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, I mean, this program's given me back so many things. It's given me back my life, my want to live, uh, my purpose, uh, you know, I actually love myself again. I feel good about myself. Giving me back my family. Uh, I mean, I put my family to torture. I definitely want to thank you. Uh, I hurt.
Yeah, definitely heard you on that. I want to apologize. But, uh, yeah, thank you all for everything you did. So, but, uh, yeah. With that, uh, I have two passages I'm just going to leave with y'all. Um, to the guys that, you know, are, I'm still here, but it's for y'all. Um, this is out of Ephesians uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 31. It's, uh, this is about leaving your past behind. And, you know, letting go of all that stuff and moving on. Uh, it says, get rid of all bitter, bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Which teaches us to let go. You know, don't forget where you came from, but just, you know, let go of your past ways, let go of the anger, let go of the meanness, let go of everything that's holding you back, and just move forward, which brought me to the Proverbs, uh, this is four, chapter 420, it says, My son, pay attention to what I say, turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health, health to one, one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your, your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the past for your feet, and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Which basically saying... You know, it's there, it's done, you can't change it, you can't go back. Make amends, let it go, move on, but keep your path straight. You know, there's a lot of temptations. I mean, there's always going to be temptations. You know, God tells us that, but He says there's never going to be anything that's uh, too strong that we can't handle because it's with us. Amen. So, stay straight, stay away from the evil, but also remember why you're here. Let that guide you every day. Thank you. While we're here, before I hand out these, I just want to say one quick thing, and that is that uh, uh, these guys know it, and I want you to uh, recollect what you just heard too. These guys talked a lot about the people that helped them through and talked a little bit about the program, but I want you to remember that the foundation, what they all kept going back to was the Word of God. Right. Every one That's of it. them. Yes. I have a verse I want to share with you. I want This is the verse that meant a lot to me. That That's the foundation of everything that we do here is God's Word. It's what separates this program, if you will, out from everything else is the Word of God. Amen. So. Um, just so you'll know, for those of you who aren't as, as familiar with the program as some of the rest of you, this program is all about the Word of God. Uh, Bob's Bible studies are about put planting God's Word in their hearts because that's what changes a man. That's what changes a man. That's what makes a man. It's not about just having victory over a, an addiction. It's about planting God's Word in your heart so that that turns you into the man that God wants you to be. Yes. So, thank you for being true to that, Bob. I'm so proud that New Beginnings is all about that. And I'm so proud to be able to stand, sit here and, and hear that you guys got it. You understand that. That it's the Word of God. It's not just about being sober. It's about planting God's Word in your heart as deeply as you possibly can. So, Trent, come on up here, brother. <coughs> Jerry, Jerry Dom. James Martin. Last but not least, Richard. You know, uh, the verse we stand on around here is Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world, 
and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That Ephesians 5, 26 says that happens by the washing of the water of the word. What we do around here is nothing spectacular or different. We just pump the word in. We wash them with the word every day. And if you get washed with the word, you're going to change. You don't have any choice. The Bible says the word of God is living. It's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, joint and marrow. And it discern it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. It changes us. It's like medicine. Uh, that's all we do. I just feed them medicine every day. Give them their medicine. They take their medicine and they get better. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to pray here in just a second once I've completed my prayer. Uh, we have some delicious desserts across the street. Uh, the chef has prepared some ice cream sundaes and a, a whole delightful raft of goodness. So please go over there and hang out with your graduates. Hang out with us. Uh, you're welcome to come do that right after this. So I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for these mighty men. Father, I thank you for these mighty men of faith and valor. Lord, that they made a choice. They made a choice to follow you. That they've decided to be committed to you, Father. And I thank you, Lord, when they make that choice, when we choose God. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Father, I thank you that we've chosen to serve you and you are a good God. So Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for everyone here. Lord, I thank you for this mission, for everyone who provides for this mission, for the generous donors, for the community of Wichita Falls. And Lord, we just thank you that your mighty hand is upon us. Lord, we thank you for this food, those who prepared it, those who are about to eat it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it.